This video was brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com slash YT. Hey guys, welcome. My name is Kevin and today we are going to talk about um, props in React and how you can actually pass data between components in React. So let's jump right into the code here. I am on codesandbox.io and on the left side you can see my code and on the right side you will see um, the output of the code. Right now you don't see anything because uh, the parent component and the app component here we are rendering greeting but if you look inside here we don't have any text here so that's why we don't see anything but we can change it, have a word here. You can see that this is printed out right now. And well, yeah, the topic of this uh, video is um, props. So let's add some props here to the greeting component. Let's say we have a prop called name and we assign the value Kevin to it. But right now we don't see anything about this because we didn't define in the greetings uh, component that we expect any props. So let's change that. You can just insert props here as a functional argument and then say um, props.name here. And this will be, in this case, Kevin. So you can see hello world.kevin. So this is the easiest way of implementing props here. That's pretty easy, right? And um, you cannot only pass one prop to a component, but as many as you like, actually. So now we are also passing age, so a number. You cannot only pass strings, you can pass any data type you can imagine. And also we pass the occupation here. So let's also implement that in the uh, greeting component so that we print all out here. So now you can see on the right side here, we say, hello, I am props.name, so Kevin, a props.h, so 26 years old props.occupation, so software developer. So this is how easy you can um, pass uh, several props to one component. And the great thing about designing your code like this is that um, you can easily reuse your code. For this I have to rewrite it a bit, just a second. And now um, you can just copy this greeting and say, okay, this is Nathan, this is Sarah. Nathan is 56 years old, she is 16 years old, she is a senior software developer, and this is a junior software developer. So you can see it here on the right side. So it's pretty easy to reuse your code, but with a different kind of data. So that's pretty awesome. And um, the problem here, or the downside here is that um, this is a pretty static component, right? You have no chance of um, interacting with this component and uh, we will change it now. So we will implement a button that if you click on it, the text will change. So we will import use state from React here. We will define the state here. So it's text switch set text switch and it will initially hold the value of true. So text switch can be either true or false. And um, we will delete these props and generate a new one. It's a text prop and this will hold this value, text switch. And now let's actually define the button. Um, the text on it will be toggle name and on click we want that set text switch will be set or that text switch will be set to the opposite of the actual or the current uh, value of text switch. So it is, if text switch is true by clicking it will be set to be false and the other way around. And um, let's see if this works. Just quickly, props.text. Um, 
So down here in the console, you can see that this is working. So this happens here. This is great. And now let's implement uh, the conditional rendering of the text. For this, we are using the modern way um, of um, implementing conditional statements in JavaScript. So we say if props.text is true, then render this, else render that. So this is how you can read it. So let me just insert some text here quickly. One second. So, okay, again, this is how you can read it. So if props.txt is true, then jump right in here and render this text and else render that text. Sorry. So let's see if this works. And yeah, you can see that if I click here, the text changes. That's great. Right now we have some, some degree of um, interaction here. That's great, right? Um, but let's take a step back again and let's see what happens if we in our greeting component expect some props like name, age, and occupation, but we only pass uh, name as a prop and age and occupation are forgotten. So what happens then? And we can see that Nathan is rendered, but age and occupation are not rendered. It's only an empty space. And um, we don't even get a notification, an error or warning that uh, some props are missing. Here. And in some cases, this can be problematic. But don't worry, there is an easy way to implement such warnings. And for that, we need to import the package prop types. If you're working like me in um, code sandbox, you can just search for it here and then install it. I already installed it, so I won't do it. And if you're working with a code editor, like, I don't know, Visual Studio Code, just do it via npm install or yarn add. And um, yeah, so with prop types installed, we can do the following. We can define here that the component greeting, so right here, uh, is expecting three uh, prop types, so name, age, and occupation. You can even say which of which type this prop is going to be. So name is a string and age is a number, for example. And we can even say if it is uh, required or not. So right now you can see that here nothing changed, but at least we get a warning that um, you can see a failed prop type. So now prop types is telling us, okay, you forgot here age and uh, occupation, so please uh, change it. But still we have the problem that nothing is rendered here and we can avoid this also with prop types with another feature. So we can assign default values to our props. So name by default will be um, set to Nathan, age will be, be uh, 27 by default and occupation will be software developer by default. So right now you can see, okay, I'm Nathan, a 27 years old software developer, even though we don't pass these props here. So if I delete everything, still is the same here. So if I go in here and change uh, name to Kevin, you can see that in this case, the default value gets overwritten with uh, our name we pass in here explicitly. So this is how you can avoid those uh, things. And now we were only talking about how to pass data from from a parent to a child, but not the other way around. So from the bottom to the top, and we will have a look at this right now. For this, I um, returned to the example from before where we had this interactive button here where we could change the text. That's exactly the same component or app. And now we want to outsource this button or this button to a separate component. So for this, um, we create a new function, a component called change greeting. 
and this component will be used inside here. So that's the same layout here. But now if we press the button, nothing happens. Why? Because we have no um, on click event here. So we have to change that props dot handle click. Um, so what we're doing here, we are pointing the component one above in the hierarchy here. So at this um, component here, so we need to say, okay, handle click is expected. Okay, and what is handle click? And again, we say handle click is props dot handle click. So again, we point one level up to this component right now in the parent component called app. And then again, we have to say, okay, handle click is what? Okay, handle click is an anonymous function in this case, which will set the text switch to, again, the opposite of the current value of uh, text switch. So let's see if this worked. And you can see it works uh, as uh, before, but with one um, huge difference that we outsourced our button here. So this logic, so this information that the button is clicked is getting passed from this component to this component and then again to this component. So this is how you can pass data or information from a child to a parent in um, React. But there could be a problem with this, which is called props drilling, which uh, describes the fact that in React, you sometimes tend to have like, I don't know, tons of child components and you pass props to every, every um, child component there. And like in this case, we passed handle click two times, one time here to greeting and one time to change greeting. And if you do it like 10 times, it can get really messy and uh, you should definitely try to avoid that. And there are two ways to try to avoid that. And the first thing is to use a state management system like Redux or the context API from React itself. Or you just try to, like in our case, we can do this. We can try to keep the amount of components to a minimum because honestly, this component, we can um, easily implement it inside this component here, because in the end, we only need this line of code, right? So I will cut it here and I will destroy this component. I will just insert this button here in the greeting component. And right now, if we take a look here, it still works, but we only pass this hand click function once which is much more clear than doing it uh, several times. And this is how you can avoid prop drilling. And yeah, this is uh, pretty much it. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the tutorial, you can see the full tutorial in our blog post linked in the description below. And if you want to see more videos and tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe hit that like button and leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also find more tutorials and videos we've already posted on our YouTube page.